So as I discussed earlier, this, besides using your hands or your uh, clairvoyance to directly observe the energy body, it's also possible to use visualization to meditate on another person's chakras or your own chakras and to try to visualize how they are doing. There are two methods of chakra visualization. One of them is to see them as wheels, the other is to see them as flowers. So I'll go into the wheel method first. In the wheel method, every wheel is spinning and the speed of the spin is an indication of how much energy is flowing. So a rapidly spinning chakra has a stronger, more quick flow of energy. Um, the direction of the spin, clockwise or counterclockwise, indicates if the energy is more flowing outward or more flowing inward. And there are several people who've made whole studies of what according to them is the proper way for a chakra to function. Uh, personally I don't believe there is one golden standard uh, to which all human beings should be held. I think it is nice to have a rough indication what is normal for a human, but I believe in a more individualized approach. So we will start with a wheel visualization. I'll talk you through it a little bit. So in this case I'll take my own third chakra to focus upon. So I use one hand to attune to the energy. So this helps to connect with the energy I'm trying to visualize. And then I can close my eyes and then I see a wheel and this wheel is turning in my vision counterclockwise and relatively slowly. The wheel itself is a little bit pitted so there is some corrosion damage to it but other than that it seems to be a strong wheel. So the vision I'm getting is showing that there is some wear and tear on the chakra but it's basically a healthy chakra but operating at a very low capacity. So the visualization is also a two-way street. So I'm picking up the energy, the energy is translated into an image and I use that image to become aware of the energy. And by changing the image it's also possible to try to change the energetic reality. So I go back to the image of feeling this wheel and the wheel in my mind is connected to the chakra in my energy body. And now I'm visualizing in a way that I'm pushing the wheel and that it starts to turn to spin more and more quickly. And as I'm visualizing this wheel becoming more and more uh, strong in its rotations, I also feel that there's a little bit of pressure building up in my belly as the chakra is also starting to send more energy and that this starts to widen itself. So I feel the base of the chakra becoming wider as it changes shape to accommodate the extra energy which is now moving because of the visualization. So the visualization can be used to see the chakra but also the visualization can be used to change the chakra. So now we will use the second method of visualization, the flower visualization. And for the flower visualization I will use a different chakra, in this case my throat chakra. 
So the basic method is the same. You use one hand to tune into the energy, to connect to it, and then you close your eyes to get an image of the chakra. And most typically people like to visualize a rose. I'm quite open to any type of flower. Uh, there's also pictures of chakras which you can use with different numbers of petals where every petal can also have a significance. Um, for me these are a little bit too complex to visualize easily so I usually let just images come. So the image I get is of a flower which is not completely open but not completely closed either. It's a half open chakra, half open flower where basically if I look at the quality of the leaves of the flower, the leaves in the heart, they're quite big, quite well developed. Then we have a ring of kind of very small leaves and then another ring of big leaves. Often the concentric circles of leaves also show the certain, the different layers in a person's personality. So the outer layer is also the outermost layer of the personality, how you present yourself to the world, how you act outwardly, physically. So that is well developed, so I'm in a way a good actor. The inner center of the, of the leaves, they're often indicating the relationship between uh, your chakra and your spirit. So are you in harmony with yourself? Are you in peace with yourself? Do you feel one with your body? Is there contentment about your existence? The middle layer, which is in my case not so well developed, they're usually about the things which are in the middle. So your sensations, your feelings, your emotions. And in this case, we're talking about the uh, throat chakra, so it's also very much about communication. Uh, so how well am I able to express my emotions, but also how well am I able to pick up on other people's emotions. And this is relatively underdeveloped in my case. But again, chakras are very flexible. So also here I can visualize a certain change. I notice that as I imagine the second ring of petals becoming bigger, but also the outer ring is becoming smaller. So to be able to pick up on other people's emotions or to be able to share my own emotions, it is not possible to do so if I am in a way wearing a mask or acting which is necessary for the outer ring to be so big. So in a way I have to stop acting, to stop manipulating, to be able to show my emotions and to listen to other people's emotions. That's apparently how my chakra structure works. So now the new image of the chakra is that the first and the second ring are well developed and the outer ring is slightly smaller. So now I've in a way changed my chakra to attune to a different situation. First it was attuned to a situation for where I simply had to teach, I had to act well, I had to perform well. And now I'm in a situation uh, which is much more private, where it is more about showing myself, showing my emotions, listening to the feelings of those around me. So chakras are very flexible and these visualizations can be used to gauge a person's state but also to change a person's state, including your own. So I think it uh, might be a good exercise to regularly do some self-observation by either the wheel method or the flower method and then to look at each chakra, look at all seven and then you will get a little bit of a imagery 
of your own inner landscape, of your own personality. One of the advantages of the wheel method over the flower method is that often you can see the interrelations between all the chakras because they are more or less like cogwheels either connecting to each other or not connecting to each other. So that you can feel when you're doing that cogwheel or wheel meditation is that chakra really connected to the chakras below it and above it? Is the impulse really being carried all the way through your consciousness? Or are there blockages between the chakras where you're not listening to yourself? And this is one of the advantages of the wheel method. The advantage of the flower method is that you can see really the different layers very easily. Really the relationship with the self, the relationship with your own thoughts and emotions and relationship with the outside world. And another advantage of the flower method is also that you can see where there it might be damage or disruption which can be on the left hand side, right hand side, top, down and more towards the center, more towards the outside of the chakra. So you can very finely pinpoint what areas of a chakra might need some healing, might need some help using the flower method. So, thank you for listening and good luck with your visualization.